Because after watching his breakdown twice, it actually feels like he conveniently breezed past the number one marker that quietly changes everything. And to be fair, I get why that's a popular take. Tate is polarizing. A lot of people are curious about whether his performance, physique, and claims are legit. That's not just a quirk of eating steak and butter. That's a textbook response to clomid or enclomiphene. You present the data, but you frame it as just safe enough to protect the headline. You give your audience just enough information to feel confident without actually exploring the full context. The devil is always in the details. And when those details get brushed aside or downplayed for the sake of engagement or brand protection, we all lose. Because science isn't about cherry picking what fits your narrative. We need to hold influencers, even the ones as big as Derek, to higher standards of transparency. Answer me this, did Derek just breeze past the biggest clue in Andrew Tate's blood work? Because after watching his breakdown twice, it actually feels like he conveniently breezed past the number one marker that quietly changes everything. And here's the real kicker. The way Clomid works, you can actually pull this off without ever triggering a failed drug test or a flagged result on Sandra Labs. Let me explain. All right, so let me set the stage real quick. If you've spent any time in the online fitness or hormone optimization world, you know who Derek from More Plates, More Dates is. He's built a massive brand around breaking down celebrity blood work, supplement protocols, and steroid cycles. And to his credit, he does a lot of deep dives that bring these topics into the mainstream. And in his latest video, he takes on none other than Andrew Tate. He goes through Tate's published labs, testosterone, LH, FSH, prolactin, estradiol, and confidently claims that Tate is not on any exogenous hormones. No testosterone, no clomid, no clomiphene, nothing. According to Derek, Tate's labs prove he's natural. And to be fair, I get why that's a popular take. Tate is polarizing. A lot of people are curious about whether his performance, physique, and claims are legit. But here's the thing. The labs, they actually tell a different story. Because when you understand how serums like Clomid work, and you stack that against the exact hormonal patterns Tate shows in his labs, it doesn't look as clear cut as Derek makes it sound. In fact, it looks suspiciously like someone on a serum. And the biggest clue, it wasn't missing. Derek actually showed it. But he breezed right past it in a way that almost feels too convenient, especially when you consider that the average viewer wouldn't have the clinical background to realize what it really means. Let's dig into why. So first, let's quickly recap what serums like Clomid or Enclomiphene actually do. They work by blocking estrogen receptors in the hypothalamus and pituitary. When you block those receptors, your brain thinks you don't have enough estrogen, so it ramps up GnRH or gonadotropin-releasing hormone. That triggers an increase in LH and FSH, which tells your testicles to produce more testosterone naturally. So on blood work, you'd expect to see elevated LH, elevated FSH, elevated total testosterone, and often lower estradiol. And that's exactly what shows up in Tate's labs. Now, to be fair, Derek does mention these elevations. He does actually do a decent job of explaining the mechanics there. But what he doesn't do is explore what this pattern could mean. Instead, he breezes past it, suggesting that even if Tate were on a serum, it wouldn't provide much benefit anyway. But that's just not true. Let me be very clear here. Clomid and enclomiphene absolutely provide benefits to men. In fact, they commonly prescribe these as first-line treatment in clinical practice for men when they have low testosterone and want to maintain fertility. Unlike testosterone replacement therapy, which shuts down your own production, serums stimulate your body to produce more testosterone on its own. And what does that get you? Higher total testosterone, maintain sperm production and fertility, and potential improvements in libido, energy, muscle retention, and recovery. This isn't fringe science. This is standard practice in many hormone optimization clinics. And here's the kicker. There is no FDA approved test that can detect Clomid or Enclomiphene directly in your bloodstream. So someone could be on it, and as long as their labs fall within the normal limits, no doctor, no influencer, and no viewer could definitively call them out without seeing a bigger pattern. And that brings us back to SHBG. So here's where things really started to stand out to me. When I first watched Derek's breakdown, I actually thought he completely skipped SHBG, like he didn't even mention it. But on second watch, I noticed he did include it, but buried it way later in the video. Tate's SHBG comes in at 54.6, which Derek frames as normal before moving right past it without much of an explanation. And to be fair, he's not entirely wrong. 54.6 is technically within the reference range, but here's what Derek didn't stop to explain. That number isn't just normal, it's high normal. And for reference, the LabCorp reported upper limit is 55.9 nanomoles per liter. So it's sitting right at the edge of the range, not comfortably in the middle, and that matters because Clomid and Enclomiphene are both known to increase SHBG in many men. And so when SHBG goes up, the percentage of free testosterone goes down, even if total testosterone looks great on paper. And when you know it, 
Tate's labs already show a low free T percentage. Now, Derek goes on to try to explain why, you know, how SHBG could be elevated because Tate is on a low carb carnivore diet, which is technically true. Low carb diets can push SHBG higher. That's a real documented effect. And as an aside, this is what I saw with my own labs when I was on a similar diet. But here's the problem with stopping there. Would we really expect SHBG to be sitting at the high 54.6 from diet alone? Maybe in some people, sure. But when you start to stack that on top of elevated LH and FSH, as well as elevated total testosterone with a low free T percentage, it starts to look a lot more like serum driven physiology, more than just a diet effect. Because when you see high normal SHBG, high gonadotropins, high total testosterone, and low free T percentage, that's not just a quirk of eating steak and butter. That's a textbook response to clomid or enclomiphene. And the fact that Derek showed the number but never even suggested this possibility, it feels negligent at best. That's what I would call a sleight of hand. You present the data, but your framing is just safe enough to protect the headline. You give your audience just enough information to feel confident without actually exploring the full context. And honestly, that's what I think Derek got wrong. And this really brings us to this larger conversation about transparency and health content. Because while I'll give Derek credit for bringing complex topics to the mainstream, this isn't the first time his credibility has been called into question. We've seen it with the whole turkesterone situation where he promoted it as the next big muscle building breakthrough, despite the fact that the science didn't really back that up. And let's not forget the independent analysis performed on his own turkesterone supplement, which showed no detectable turkesterone at all. And this was according to third-party GC mass spectrometry. And moving forward, even more recently, Greg Doucette basically gave a supplement breakdown that exposed several of Derek's Gorilla Mine products, which are marketed com for completely different goals, actually share the same exact chemical composition based upon GCMS analysis. And now, with this breakdown at Tate's labs, it feels like we're just seeing yet another example of Derek glossing over inconvenient details to protect a viral headline. And look, I'm not here to cancel anybody, but I am here to remind you that the devil is always in the details. And when those details get brushed aside or downplayed for the sake of engagement or brand protection, we all lose. Because science isn't about cherry picking what fits your narrative. It's about laying out the entire picture, even when it's inconvenient. And in this case, the picture is far from clear cut. So here's what I hope you take away from this breakdown. First, blood work interpretation is nuanced. Elevated LH, FSH, and testosterone could be natural, but it could also be serum assisted. And in Tate's case, the full hormonal picture leans heavily towards serum use. Second, serms like Clomid or Enclomiphene do provide real benefits for men who want to optimize testosterone without shutting down their fertility. Third, SHBG is not just a throwaway marker. When it's high normal and free T is low, that matters. And dismissing it as just diet is intellectually lazy. And finally, we need to hold influencers, even the ones as big as Derek, to higher standards of transparency. So here's what I want you to do. If you think Derek got this right, tell me why in the comments. And if you think you missed the mark, let me know that as well. And if you're as passionate about cutting through the noise on men's health and hormone optimization as I am, hit the subscribe button, share the video, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.